Heavenly Father, we come now to your table to contemplate the death, the burial, the resurrection of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. To think again about ourselves and what we deserve and what you have done for us instead. God, we pray to be humbled all over again, to rejoice all over again, to revel in forgiveness and to pursue holiness. We ask that this memory, this remembrance, this celebration of your son's death until he comes would serve us to focus our attention on that which is most important. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, as we begin our time celebrating the Lord's death at the table of communion, um, we want you to be able to read in God's word for yourself a passage we're going to look at. So some men are going to come forward. They're going to hand out Bibles. If you don't have a Bible this morning, just put your hand up. They'll put one in your hands. If you don't own a Bible, we'd love to give you this Bible as a gift uh, so that you can read God's word for yourself. I'd like to turn your attention this morning to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14. Hebrews 10, 14 says this. By one offering... God has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. By one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are, quite literally, being sanctified. Now, you may not have expected a grammar lesson in a communion message, and so I apologize in advance. If uh, if you're not a a grammarian, um, just listen, hang on. But there are a couple of verb tenses here that make all the difference in the world. All the difference for a sinner. All the difference for eternity and for the present life. Notice in Hebrews 10, 14, we have this statement, by one offering, he has perfected. He has perfected. Um, That happens to be a perfect tense in the English. It's a perfect tense in the Greek. The fundamental significance of the perfect tense in both languages is a past action with continuing results into the present. If I said to you, I have taken out the trash, that means the trash is out. I did it in the past and it's still out. Here, God is saying by one sacrifice, he has perfected for all time. What does that mean? That means in the gospel of Jesus Christ, via Jesus' death on the cross and his finished work there to take the sins of everyone who would ever believe, past, present, and future, and take them on himself as the sin bearer. In that act, he perfected for all time believers. Perfected them for all time. That is a justifying act of grace where God, on the basis of a substitute death, declares the sinner to be righteous, to be perfect, to be complete, to have in his account all that God requires for access to heaven. This is the great news of the gospel. This is the great news of the Bible. This is the great news of Christianity. Not that sinners must do a bunch of things to clean themselves up, perform a bunch of religious works, and hope against hope in the end that you've done enough, but that God himself has perfected for all time all who belong to him. He has made a declaration, a past action with continuing results into the present, and this verse makes it even more explicit than simply the perfect tense verb, adds this little phrase, for all time forever. The idea here in this word is that which happens without interruption into the infinite future. You see, a believer in Jesus Christ never gets uncompleted, deperfected. A believer in Jesus Christ in the courtroom of God never has his status changed by some foible. By sin. This is good news. 
For all of us in this room, we're, we're here this morning reflecting on the death of Jesus Christ in our place and we're thinking about, we ought to be thinking about, oh, I sinned again today, this week. I'm saved by grace, perfected by justifying grace, and yet uh, there is the residue of sin still in me. Sin by attitude, words, behavior, motives, actions. I am still in need of a savior. I've never escaped that, and yet the saving work of Christ means that God has done a perfecting work for all time for all who are in him. Now notice the last part of the verse. By one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And put on your grammar hat for one more second. The ones being sanctified is not a perfect tense. This is a a participle and a present tense and an ongoing reality. This is a process word. Those who have been justified by His grace, perfected by the once for all sacrifice of Christ, are in this life being sanctified. It's a really double-edged good news. Once and for all time forgiven of your sins, past, present, and future, and in an ongoing process being transformed, being changed, such that Sin falls away and greater conformity to Christ comes. This is all the act of God, the work of God and the life of a believer. If you have not been perfected, you're not a Christian. And if you are not being sanctified, you are not a Christian. These two things go together. You can't separate them out. No one gets a get out of hell free card and isn't transformed. No one gets in a transformation process by the grace of God without having his debt of sin canceled once and for all time. These two things go together. God does this work, both sides of it. That's good news for us. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We proclaim the fact that God at the cross crushed his son as our substitute, bearing our sin And we praise God for his grace that he has not left us alone to deal with the residue of our natures in our own power. But he is actively in a work of transformation, bringing us to greater conformity to Christ. We're gonna take bread and juice. These are symbols of Jesus' body and his blood. The men are gonna distribute those. Men, you can come down now and pass those plates. And as you take those, there are two cups. Sometimes you have to do a little work to separate them without throwing things around. But separate those carefully and hold on to them. We'll take the body and the blood symbols together in a few moments. In the meantime, there will be a moment of silence. This is an opportunity for you to think about your own heart and life. Listen, if you're not in Jesus Christ, this is not for you. Don't take these elements if your life does not belong to him. If you have not been perfected for all time by the finished work of Christ, forgiven of your sins, and if you're not in a process of being sanctified. This celebration is for believers to remember what Jesus has done. And in a moment of silence, go before the Lord and confess any known sins. And take the opportunity to rejoice in the forgiveness purchased for you at the cross Confess your sins, knowing that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then, of course, rejoice in the fact that the one who died is coming back for his own. He will not leave us in a mixed condition forever, but we will have a home with him one day where we can never sin again, where we will no longer be in the ongoing process of sanctification, But perfection and completion, which is a status for us now, will become an active living reality for us then. Take a few moments, examine your hearts, rejoice in the gospel, confess your sins, and I'll lead us to take these elements together in a moment.